Oye, oye. No, I still the same. Who can you hear me anyway, Matt? Can you? Yeah, yeah, that's the main thing. How's things? Yeah, I'm good, Matt. I'm good. How's the training going? Yeah, it's um, it's um, it's the last of sparring this week now, and then um, the are bit done, like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Did um, did the whole lockdown situation make you hungrier? Have you been busting to get in there? Uh, yeah, I had like 18 knuckles back. Like, um, I was supposed to fight in um, May, when I? So, yeah. It was, um, and especially being in Cardiff, like, it was a massive event. So, I was a bit gutted more than anything, but, uh, but um, this, this has come off now. So, I, can't, I just can't wait for it to happen now, but I, I, I wish it was this week, like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But um, you're coming out of this pandemic anyway with another British title shot. Um, it's taking, I'll fight you in my back on to a new level. Is it exciting to be part of uh, such such a mad event? Yeah, it's um, it's a bit crazy, but isn't it? I think when you think about it, like, ah, fighting in uh, someone's back garden, like, I get yeah. paid for the shot. So, um, I've had plenty of scraps in people's back gardens, but I didn't get paid for him. I was going to play this title, like, but, uh, yeah, uh, it's a strange time, but uh, it's, it's a hard fight, like, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, we both true professionals, and uh, I think we both were on a, we were on a good show, man. Because, um, obviously, Tennyson's a very experienced fighter. He's had 29 bouts. Um, have you and Tony studied, studied his tape? Um... We, just, I, I'm not. I don't really like to look into fighters, but obviously I've seen a couple of his fights. Um, yeah, he's a very big puncher. Um, yeah, very good fighter. He won the fourth for a world title. Otherwise, like so, it's a massive yeah. fight. It's not, it's not just a British title fight. This ain't this. This will give me a world ranking as well. Like and uh, really push me, push me on to bigger and better things. Like so. Your two styles together um, are going to make for a barnstorm, aren't it? Uh, yeah, but uh, you could say that. Like we both like, like I like to style my 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 style's a bit like a, like a Mexican. Like I call myself the Mer Mer Mexican. Well, I don't call myself, but uh, a couple of boys in the gym call myself the Mer Mer Mexican. Like so. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's gonna. Uh, I think it's gonna gel well, and uh, I think it's gonna be a hell of a fight. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be awesome to watch. With um, obviously with the experience he has on his side, is this going to be a toughest career, uh, toughest fight of your career so far? Ah, uh, definitely. Um, I know uh, Joe was probably the toughest um test so far, but um, he didn't really have the knockout power, Joe. It was just like the speed and the accuracy yeah. of the shots. Um, with tennis, and it's a totally different ball game. I can't. I can't switch off. I know I can't switch off for them. A couple of seconds, I can get spark clean out. So, so yeah, yeah. It's a diff different ball game altogether. This this fight, like with uh, with your fight with Cordina, obviously that was your first loss. What what did you learn? What did you take away from that fight? Um, I was uh, I was rushing a lot, really. Um, I used to rush rush in and get caught with shots. Because I wasn't worried about the power of these lightweights, because I know I'm sparring a lot bigger boys, like welterweights and light middleweights. Um, even up to middleweights, like I, I'm sparring, I'm always sparring bigger boys because I'm always quite big in the gym. So, yeah. But I knew when I, when I was fighting lightweights, I could just like walk in and not worry about the power. So I was getting it with shots on the way in and losing the early round, which I can't afford to do. Obviously, as I go through the ranks uh, and fight the better boys, they're going to catch me and uh, and hurt me. I'm not. I, no one's uh, invincible, but I know I've got a good chin. But no one's invincible, like so. That's one th one thing I think from it. Yeah, it's very true. Um, uh, you fought Cordina just uh, twelve fights into your career. What a, what an experience that must have been, and a platform as well on the Lomachenko and Campbell undercard. 
Yeah, like um, like uh, that, that, that memory will always be be with me that uh, I boxed in the O2 when um, Lomachenko, Lomachenko and Luke Campbell boxed like pound for pound, one of the best fighters in the world at the moment. So it was a a, a really good event to be a part of, and um, I think I impressed Matchroom and uh, Eddie and and uh, they gave and they gave me a shot as soon as I got out that that back on a winning. Winning track, they gave me a shot again at the title because they knew I was uh, hungry and uh, always, always going to give a good account of myself. Yeah, yeah, he loves that. Uh, who tends to uh, tend to enjoy it? He? he was the same with Jay Harris when yeah. um, I think Martinez was going to blow him out, and um, Matt Room was very chuffed with his performance. Yeah, definitely. And um, you know what? I, 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 I was. I, I go all the way through that build up for that fight. Um, I was thinking, oh, Jay might, might like win the first couple of rounds and then Martinez might catch up with him in the, in, in the later rounds. Sort of but you know what? He, he pulled something special up to the bag today and it was a lot closer than what the judges had in. Like, so, oh, definitely. What a fight, that. Is, um, have you spoken to Joe since your fight or have you brought him in for sparring? Um, no, I am really, I am really seen him, but uh, obviously he trains up in um, uh, Essex in, it, in the matchroom gym. But yeah. we uh, we won um, fight of the year contest in the Welsh area um, awards. So uh, we seen each other there, like we had a little talk, chat and things like that. But uh, other than that, we don't like he lives in Cardiff anyway. I I'm right down in the valley, like so. I don't really yeah. see each other. Mm. So, um, back to tennis I know. Um, I heard a comment that he made, or seen a comment that he made, I think it was on his Instagram. Um, it was along the lines of, it's fights like these that I need to win convincingly. Yeah. Do you think he's overlooking him? Um, I know he ain't overlooking me, because uh, the boys they sparred, um, the boys he beat sparred, and I sparred out in LA, and um, they, they, they know what I'm like. Um, I'm not going to say nothing about the sparring, but obviously it was good rounds out there, and they know how tough I am and how, and how good I am. So I don't think he's going to overlook me. He's a, he's a true professional himself. Every fight you got to you got to take it like it's a world title fight. So yeah, I, I don't think he's overlooking me. No. If if an opponent does overlook or uh, overlook you, sorry, or you come in the underdog, does that do you thrive on that? Yeah, um, it's, it's, it, it gives you more to be, more, more than anything. Um, now, in training, uh, people doubting you. And, uh, obviously, when the, the Codina fight was announced, they thought he was going to blow me out there two or three rounds. I wasn't going to last. But obviously, I proved a lot of people wrong, um, which, which I'm going to do in this fight as well. I'm going uh, to be bringing that belt back to the Valleys with me. Okay. You um, obviously you shared a gym with some of the best talent in Wales too to help you uh, come up to the fight, lead up to the fight. Um, what's the morale like in the gym? Um, obviously because of the COVID and everything like that, we're not we're not allowed to be in the gym at the same time, so it's a bit of a bummer. Yeah. Like, but, um, like some of the some of the boys have come back training now because obviously it's their job. Um, they're allowed to sort of thing. So everyone's buzzing, like, and everyone's seen how hard I've been training. And uh, uh, Jamie Cox is back training. And he said it's the best of, it's the best he's ever seen, me, and it's the hardest I've seen, the hardest um, punching he's ever seen me as well. Because we've done, we've done body sparring and things like that. Like, so. Because obviously you're going to be have to be training a lot, um, not just for this fight, but for all your fights. How, how would your family feel when you're in, in camp? Um, it's it is hard with like because obviously I don't see, I got a I got a young boy. Yeah, uh, he's only three, like. So yeah. I don't I don't see a lot of him, which is 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 cruel in a way. But like maybe when he's older, he'll understand why why I done it. For for a better life for him more than anything, and um, a better life for for my fiance. And soon to be my wife next year, we get married next year. So, they, they, my missus knows the reason why I'm doing it. Like, so, yeah. yeah. Does your boy watch you fight? Yeah, yeah. He, he, he uh, loves it. He 
like watches me clips of, of sparring and hard work. He, he loves it, but he loves all the uh, punching. I think he's going to be a boxer. My missus uh, don't want him to be a fighter, but he just loves him. He's a he's a little mad head for him. How how would you feel about him going into boxing, Gav? Um, I didn't want I didn't want him to box. Um, obviously, I know how hard it, uh, how hard the sport is. Um, even just on the amateur level, how hard it is to even get international, like to win a Welsh title. How, how, how much you got to put your body through, and and things like that. So I didn't really want him to get into it, but I want him to go to the gym and know what he's doing. I'd want him to get bullied, or I'd want him to be a bully. And I think, I think um, taking a kid to a boxing gym will will teach him that, that bullying's not. not 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 the answer, and stick up stick up for your friends and um, things like that. It, it's it's puts you in a good place, but um, in boxing gyms, uh, it it teaches you right from wrong and uh, gives you manners for your elders. Um, it's, it's 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 great. It's it's great. Like even even if he just had a couple of amateur fights, um, just give him that. I don't know that um, sort of. I don't know achievement sort of thing. Yeah, because obviously it must be hard to watch your son in the ring, but like you said, you know what comes with it, and you know the good of boxing the brain. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But I, I don't think I'd be able to watch him in the ring. But if I'm honest, you, <laughs> if the other kid, yeah, was yeah, it must be hard, man. I, I don't think I could watch my son box, even as much no. as I love the sport, and it's different when it's your kids, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's different when it's your blood. Like, like I'd rather him going to rugby or uh, football. Um, yeah, I know they both are uh, difficult sports to get like to the top in, but they're a lot easier on your body more than anything. And um, uh, yeah, and it's a lot more <laughs> a lot more money in it. <laughs> yeah, oh, most definitely. You're not getting punched in the face, and I'm gonna blow the nose every fight. <laughs> no, no, no. What um what legacy are you open to leave when you leave the sport inside and outside of the ring? Um, inside the ring, I I I just want to be known for, uh, like I always I always come to win, no matter what. Even if I, I, the odds are stacked up against me, I I've never just gone there for the money sort of thing. I'm I I'm always gonna go for the win. Like I'm never gonna be go, go down that road that I'm just boxing for money. When when I'm taking. Yeah. Idens of youngsters and things like that. I'm gonna just call it a day. Um, I just want to win as many titles as possible and try and achieve achieve my dream now of just winning a British title and then and then push on from there. Really, I, everyone wants to be a world champion, but I'm I'm realistic. Like European title is probably within my reach. I think so. If I get to be become a European champion, I think that'll be my that'll be my like. That'd be my all-out dream, like sort of thing. But um, and then outside the ring, like more uh, as if, like I know some fighters are like big headed and things like that. But I'm not, I'm not that type of guy. Like you come up to me and have a chat and ask me questions. Like even if a young amateur in the gym now comes up and asks me, I'll just, I'll give him a few pointers. I'll take him on the pads. I'll take him on sparring. I'm not one of them guys. So I just want to be known as a nice guy outside the ring, like. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, talking about uh, what, going off what you were saying just now about staying in the sport too long. Um, Sergio Martinez, are you today? He's coming back. What do you think about that? Um, I think he's past it. If I'm honest, he's he's full of full of injuries as well. Like, yeah. I, I think he had his both knees strapped up in the last fight, and he's strapped up to hills. Like, I, 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 yeah. Like, and that's just years of like. Putting your body through torture, that is making weight runs, getting fit. It's just, I think it's a wrong move, and um, I don't know what he's done with his money. He must have made enough money, but he must have blown it all. Like I don't know why. I I, I know it's gonna when I retire. I know it's gonna be a big hole to f try and fill, but I think I'd go down the route of training youngsters and still being in the gym that way, sort of thing. Would you like to have your own gym after you retire and bring kids up the way you was in boxing? 
yeah, well, that's that's the plan now in the next couple of years, and hopefully, um, I can I, I can buy a piece of land and uh, build my own gym, and uh, that's what I want to do. I don't want to be working on site till I'm sixty, seventy. So that's the road I want to go down. Um, open my own gym, even even if it's just training. Um, PTs and things like that at the start and then turn it into a boxing gym where I can do it uh, in the nights for the youngsters and then and maybe in the day and for daytime for the the pros like so how, um, how old is you when you got into it uh, first fight I was 19 I think it was 1920 uh, but I, I've always been in and around the gym I've always been sparring um like since I was about twelve, probably I've always been around gyms and things like that. So I've always, I've always trained like, but I never actually had a fight until I was senior. And then my first fight was in um, a novice final, senior, um, senior sixty-three kilo class. It was, yeah. So, you know, I didn't know that. I'm actually quite surprised. When was it? Eighteen, nineteen. You had your first fight. I'm sure I was nineteen, but nineteen. 19 I was, yeah, 19, my missus just, yeah, corrected me, I was 19, but, yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that, that's, um, that's late starting, and especially yeah. to where you are now, that's great. Yeah, like, um, I started, um, I started back tidy when I was about 18, I thought, oh, I'm going to give this a crack, and my, my only goal was to win a Welsh title, a novice title, and then I lost in the final the one year, but that was my first fight, so, yeah, my friend said, we lent to you. Um, next year for the um, five to ten uh, cl um, class, like sort of thing. So I went on to win it then in the, that year, and then the year after I entered the uh, open class seniors, and I got all the way to the semi final and lost against Zach Davis in my I think it was my fifteen fight, but it was a close fight as well. Like it was a hell of a fight. It was um it was a barnstormer like so, and then. I ended up um, going down Welsh, the Welsh squad then, um, sparring all the boys down there, and then I went back and won the Welsh the year after. So I done know all that in the matter of, I think it was like three years. Like it was quite quick, and then I went on to the British, um, lost to Alfie Price then in the in the semis, and then had trials with uh, Team GB, got through to the second, f second trials, and uh, I just thought... Uh, um, I'm just going to turn pro. There's no point me hanging about. I'm not. I'm not a spring chicken sort of thing. So yeah. that's what I'm going about it. But I know you're on your second attempt of the long title. Yeah, within within like 14 fights. Like it's it's mad. Like some people wait till they're like 20 and old to just even get a British title shot. So yeah. I've done it. I, well, I think it was my 12th fight. Was it my 12th fight? 12th yeah, so. fight was your first attempt. Yeah. Yeah, so that is it's pretty quick, and I won a Welsh title within six fights as well. So yeah, but I, I've always had that good engine. Like I could always, even as an amateur, I could spar like ten rounds and and not be phased by it. I was sparring pros all the time. I used to spar Tony Pace. I sparred him leading up to Lansheen fight. I spar I sparred him all the time. Like so, I've always been in and around pros. So. I think the pro style suited me a lot more. Yeah, but um, before I finish off with some quick fire questions, last question, Gab. Um, yeah. If you do did ever get the opportunity to fight for a world title, who is the opponent you'd like to fight the most? Um, you gotta be Lomachenko. You gotta be, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I know. I got yeah. no I know I've got no chance of winning, but imagine that, like, and the money that brings as well. He's my favourite fighter of all time. Yeah, yeah. I study all the history of boxing, but the only check was just something else. But, but if, it, um, if it was, like, uh, any fighter of any decade, um, any weight, I'd love to fight... Arturo Gatti. Yeah. I can imagine being in the ring with him. Like the, I think out styles would be like, it make for a barn. So I'm not saying I do any any good against him. Like I maybe last a couple of rounds, but 
Do you know what? That'd be like fantastic. Like, but he's it'd be he's Gary cool. Ward four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't think I do as well as that. Like, but uh, <laughs> no, well, you never know, man. You never know. Yeah, like I can remember. Um, I can remember uh, sparring with Gary Buckland for the Gavin Reese fight, and yeah. uh, I think we done like six rounds. And honest to God, it was just toe to toe. Like it was like. It was probably one of the best sparring sessions I've ever done in my life. But like, um, yeah, yeah. Gary, Gary even now like helps me out with bar, body sparring as well. Like fair play to him. He always, he's always in the gym. He's, he stays fit. Like so, fair play to Gary. He's like he's a legend of Welsh boxing as well. Yeah, it's amazing to have um, all the new and old in Welsh boxing helping each other. That's great. Yeah, uh, definitely, but definitely, and uh, I know he wants me to win that title as well. So, fair play to him, like for helping me out. I'm sure you will. Yeah. So before I um, finish off, no doubt, is it right if I ask you a few quick fire questions to finish off? Porter is as long as Joe with us. I'm asked any questions, but <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I surely counted a few. Um, I know you should fall, he was. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's, uh, I, um, I'll find you some after one. Yeah. One has to go for Eva. The Chinese are winning. Food, obviously, not people. Oh, <laughs> um, <laughs> Chinese, I love an Indian, but I love an Indian, I do. Crisps or chocolate? Oh, chocolate all day. No, I'll, I'll eat, like, no one I'm not dieting, like, after a fight, I'll probably eat. And I'm not lying, you can ask my missus, I'll probably eat about 20 bars a day. 20 bars? Yeah, seriously, man. That's a I'm, lot of chocolate, that is. I'm, You've been looking like Willy Wonka. I make myself a cup of coffee, I'll have like three Snickers bars with a cup of coffee in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you deserve it. <laughs> what, what is your biggest pet hit? Um... Biggest pet hate? Um, in anything, like anything, anything. Uh, that's an odd one, is what? Um, off the top of my head, gotta be. No, if people don't wave when you let them through. <laughs> oh, oh man, that's, I hate that. I'm really pissing me off. Cars. What is the best gift you've ever received? Uh, my boy. Yeah, my yeah, boy. Yeah, good answer, man. What is your dream car? Dream car. Be honest with you, I'm not. I'm not into cars that much, so I just have a nice camper van, like camper van, VW camper yeah, van. Be cool. Uh, first thing you think of when you wake up in the morning? Food. <laughs> <laughs> I bet, especially when you're training, I bet it is. Yeah, yeah. food, yeah. Best type of music you listen to? Um, I do like to, um, no, nah, say no. Nah. I listen to anything really, but like, I like, I like old school, like Tupac and Biggie and things like that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And last one is one from Jordan with us in the comments. What happened in the apartment in LA? I can't. <laughs> I can't explain. <laughs> <laughs> they won't let me fight in the in the garden if I say have I? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Uh, thank you very much for coming out today, Gavin. Really appreciate it. No worries, but um, I'm I'm sorry you couldn't see me tidy. That's uh, all right, man. It's all right. We'll, uh, we'll do another one after you fight, I'm sure, anyway. Yeah, I'll be able to buy a new phone, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wish you all the best and uh, stay safe and um, bring that title back home to Wales. Nice one, bud. Thank you very much. Thank you. No worries. I'll see you later. Ta-ra, bud. Ta-ra. Ta-ra, Gav. Ta-ra, bud. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah.